Hey guys, it's Saga, and in this video, I'm going to put the triple cameras on the Mi 11X against the dual cameras on the iPhone 12. Yeah, I know there is a big price gap between these two phones, but many of you guys asked for this video in the comments, so here it is. iPhone 12 costs more than twice as much as the Mi 11X, so does that mean its cameras are two times better? Let's find out. For starters, iPhone 12 gets a dual camera setup on its back, whereas the Mi 11X comes with a triple camera setup on its back. So you get a more versatile camera setup for less price on the Mi 11X. We have over 160 image and video samples from both these phones combined to go through. So to keep this video from getting any longer than it already is, instead of going through all the camera specs, I will leave them on this slide. You can pause the video and go through them if you want. For a better look at the camera interface on these phones, I suggest you guys check out their individual camera reviews. I will leave card to them on the top right corner of your screen and also link them in the description section. For this camera comparison, let us start with the videos first. Mi 11X can shoot 4K videos at 30fps, whereas the iPhone 12 can shoot 4K videos at 60fps. This is a 4K 30fps video sample from both. I said this in its dedicated camera review as well, that the videos from the Mi 11X look really good. It manages the exposure and colors really well, and you don't see any drop frames even if you shoot 4K videos for a long time. iPhone 12 gets optical image stabilization on the main sensor, so its videos are very stable. Mi 11X doesn't have OIS, but the electronic stabilization seems to be doing a fine job keeping its video stable. It is not too aggressive that you will feel like the phone is on a gimbal, so the videos look natural like they should. Both of them can shoot 1080p videos at 60fps, but you lose out on a lot of details and sharpness if you shoot at this resolution on either of these phones. Now because the electronic stabilization is so good, I shot most of my videos on the Mi 11X in 4K resolution and I'm happy with how they turned out. It is not too often that we see an Android phone which is good at shooting videos, especially in this price range. So a big thumbs up to Xiaomi for that. For slow motion, both max out at shooting 240fps videos at 1080p resolution. You can shoot 4K 60fps videos on the iPhone 12 and slow them down later on. But for this video comparison, I stuck to shooting 1080p 240fps slow motion videos. Again you can see the Mi 11X is doing really well here. Now you need to be very careful while shooting slow motion videos. There should be a lot of light around, so it is best that you shoot these videos outdoor in bright sunlight. If you shoot these videos indoors or in anything less than ideal light, you will see a lot of green or noise in your slow motion footage. Also be aware about the lights that you are shooting these videos under. If the lights are not of the best quality, they will interfere with the frame rate of the videos and you will see flickering in your slow motion videos, so be aware about that. For images, let us begin with the daytime shots. Now the Mi 11X gets a 48 megapixel primary sensor, but these are 12 megapixel pixel bin shots from it. These daytime shots seem to be detailed from both, at least from this far. There seems to be more contrast in Mi 11X's images, making the shadows on its images appear a lot darker. iPhone 12 on the other hand is capturing a ton of details in the shadows as well. As I said, these images look detailed from so far, and as we zoom in, we see both of them capturing similar details which is surprising given the iPhone's sensor size. Mi 11X is also capturing a lot of noise in the darker areas, while the iPhone's ISP is doing a great job of keeping that noise level down. The Mi 11X is adding a bit of artificial sharpening to its images, which you can see if we zoom in so much. If we don't zoom in, we see similar amount of details from both the phones, but the difference in the contrast levels is very apparent. We see this in all the images, but overall images from the Mi 11X are still looking good at least when there is bright light around like in these images. iPhone's images are as always looking amazing and because you have so much more details in the shadows and highlights, these images are easier to edit. I mean, there is a lot more information in these shots which you can manipulate and push a lot further than images from any of the other phones. In diffuse light or in slightly overcast conditions, Mi 11X starts capturing a lot of noise. iPhone 12 on the other hand does really well to keep that noise level down. iPhone's images also look richer overall. You can see the artificial sharpening on the Mi 11X at play here. If I zoom in so far, we feel like the images from the Mi 11X are sharper, but that is actually not the case. We feel so because of the artificial sharpening and the extra bit of contrast that its images have. But look at the clouds in the sky. They clearly look pixelated and filled with noise in the image from the Mi 11X, whereas they still look smooth and mostly noise-free in the iPhone's image. For this shot, there was a lot of fog around, so the Mi 11X even had a hard time setting the focus 
but the iPhone 12 did a good job. There is no point of zooming in for details in this shot, because image from the Mi 11X is not even in focus. It took me over 2.5 days to gather these image and video samples for you guys. But it takes you less than 5 seconds to hit the like button and show your appreciation towards the work that goes behind the camera to bring these videos in front of you. And while you are at it, please take another 10 seconds and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on all the notifications. It is free but goes a long way towards helping my channel grow. Other than the obvious change in the contrast levels between these cameras, you also see a distinct difference in the way they capture colors. Mi 11X tries and does well to capture natural looking colors and its images don't have a warm or cool look to them. Sometimes these images even appear a bit too dull. iPhone 12 on the other hand adds a slight bit of saturation to these images and its colors are also slightly on the warmer side. Normally I like natural looking colors, but I feel the Mi 11 XS images could look much better with a little bit of saturation and brightness added to them. Don't get me wrong, Mi 11 XS images are definitely capturing the colors as they were in real life, but for some reason all of its images are a bit underexposed which makes them look dull, especially when compared to the images from other phones. Everyone pursues color in a different way, so which one of these images you like will depend on your color preference. When it comes to capturing high dynamic range, for the scenes like this where the conditions are not too harsh, Mi 11X does a fairly good job of bringing up the shadows and keeping the highlights in check. But in harsh or tougher conditions like these, it only manages to bring up the shadows while blowing up the highlights iPhone 12 on the other hand does a wonderful job in most situations which demand higher dynamic range. You might not make out how well the iPhone 12 did in this shot straight away, but as you look at it for some more time, you will realize it brought back more details from the darker shadows and it also managed the highlights in the clouds so well that you can see different layers of clouds on top of each other. Whereas in image from the Mi 11X, it just looks like one grey cloud. Coming to the close up shots, both these phones don't take too long to set the focus on any particular object. It depends on lighting conditions, but 8 out of 10 times, iPhone is a few milliseconds faster. This won't matter a lot if you just occasionally take close up shots. But if you take a lot of close up shots that to back to back, then this time adds up and you do notice the speed difference. Main subject is perfectly sharp in the close up shots from both, and thanks to the wide aperture, background gets a very nice optical blur. iPhone has a wider aperture, so its plane of focus is narrower and the background in its images is blurred out a bit more. Wide aperture and OIS also means that the iPhone's close-up shots are slightly brighter because they capture light for a slightly longer time. Close-up shots might look better from the iPhone 12, but it can't get any more closer to the main subject than this. Mi 11X on the other hand has a dedicated macro lens and it will let you get incredibly close to your subject. This lens has a 5 megapixel sensor behind it, so the main subjects in these shots have enough details in them. Android phones have had macro lenses for a few years now. And I think it is time that Apple starts including these on their phones as well. In the last year or so, companies have started prioritizing macro cameras over the telephoto lens, but how often do you guys really use it on your phone? Let me know in the comments. At times, you might find yourself in situations where you wanted to capture something but you can't get the complete subject in your frame and you might not even have more space to move back. In these situations, the wide lens on both these phones comes in very handy. This lens will let you capture a much wider field of view without having to move back. iPhone 12's wide lens has a wider field of view compared to the one on the Mi 11X, so you can capture more of the scene in its wide shot. It also gets a 12 megapixel sensor behind the lens compared to the 8 megapixel one on the Mi 11X, so wide shots on the iPhone 12 look noticeably sharper and they also capture less noise. These images are not as detailed as the ones from main cameras on either of these phones. We also see some distortion and at times even a bit of artifacting towards the edges of these wide shots. iPhone's wide shots show the same amazing dynamic range as its main camera and the one on the Mi 11X again struggles with the highlights as its main camera. Since wide cameras don't take the cleanest or sharpest images, please don't take most of your images with these lenses. They are there just so that you can capture a different perspective occasionally or switch to them when the main camera just won't be able to get your subject in the shot. For anything else, I would stick to the main camera for almost all of my shots, especially in conditions where there is less than ideal light. If you insist on taking lot of wide shots, consider going with the iPhone 12 as its wide camera is clearly better in terms of details and dynamic range. Before we start comparing the portrait shots from both of them, you should know that you need to do a bit of extra work while taking portraits from the Mi 11X. If the background in your portrait shots is even slightly brighter than your subject, Mi 11X will completely blow up the highlights in the shot. You'll have to tap on the subject on your phone's screen or lower the exposure manually for the portrait shots to look much better. 
So just keep this in mind while taking portraits with this phone. Now coming back to comparing portrait shots from both these phones. Edge detection for portrait shots has never been iPhone's strong suit, but it still manages to make the overall shot look much better. While most phones try to cut out and keep the entire subject in focus, iPhones only tend to keep the part of the subject closest to the phone or the part that you tap on in focus and gradually blurs everything in front of and behind it as a real DSLR camera would do. Colors in its portrait shots also look much better. Skin tones are natural and the background also gets a very nice looking blur while it looks a bit busier in the portraits from the Mi 11X. I feel skin tones appear a bit dull in the portraits from the Mi 11X. iPhone also handles the dynamic range in a much better way. You can adjust the amount of blur to the background while you are taking these shots or even after you have clicked them on both these phones. Edge detection is equally good or maybe it gets slightly better for both of them while taking portraits of objects. Both are isolating and separating the subject from the background accurately and since there are no skin tones in these portrait shots, colors from the Mi 11X don't seem to be dull or off. I ask about this many times and I just don't get enough responses in the comments, so I ask it again. Do you guys take portraits of objects? Or okay, let me make this an even wider question. Do you guys even use the portrait mode on your phone very often, whether it is for taking portraits of humans, pets or objects? If you do, let me know in the comments. Coming to artificial and lower light images. I took these images just as the sun was about to set and sky was painted with these amazing colors. iPhone 12 is showing how the sky looked in real life, whereas the Mi 11X just desaturated the whole image and dulled everything down. iPhone has a wide aperture on the main camera and it also gets optical image stabilization, both of which are very helpful while taking low light images. Bigger aperture lets in more light and OIS helps the sensor gather more light for slightly longer time while compensating for movements from shaky hands. What this means in simple terms is, the main camera on the iPhone 12 gathers much more details compared to the Mi 11X in these lighting conditions. As I zoom in on this image, you can see that the iPhone's image is much sharper and it also has much less noise overall. The Mi 11X starts at 30,000 rupees and at this price point, Xiaomi should have given us optical image stabilization. They achieved smooth video via electronic stabilization, but that doesn't work while taking images. So there is really no substitute for OIS while taking images in lower light. These were low light shots without the night mode on both the phones. If you switch the night mode on on both of them, you will see some subtle improvements. Neither of them try to make the night look like day with this mode, which is really nice. This mode just introduces a bit of light in the darker parts and tries to make everything appear sharper. iPhone is clearly having sharper images here as well. In the process of bringing up details in the darker areas, Mi 11X introduces even more noise in its shots, whereas the iPhone 12 does really well to keep the noise level to minimum. You should know that the night mode images take much longer to capture, so you will have to hold both these phones steady for 2-5 to five seconds. If you are taking images of people, you will have to ask them to be still for that time as well, because any movement during that time will result in a blurry shot. Night mode will give you good images, but only if you can hold the phone steady. I have seen many people not holding the phone steady for long enough and their resulting images were just not as sharp, so keep that in mind. Here is how much light the wide lenses can capture on both these phones. I have mentioned it before that these wide cameras are not as good as the primary ones and they also get a very narrow aperture, so these cameras are not able to gather a lot of information in these lighting conditions. Fortunately, both the phones also have night mode for these lenses as well. And again, we see images from the iPhone having more details, whereas Mi 11 XS images just look muddy. Turning on night mode does help both the phones handle the exposure from bright lights in a much better way. iPhone was already doing a better job with it even without the night mode. But the difference in handling the highlights improves a lot on the Mi 11X when you click its images with the night mode turned on. This is true for wide and the main camera as well. So while the low light performance on the Mi 11X is improved a bit with the night mode, iPhone is definitely a lot better in low light photography both with and without the night mode. That brings us to the front facing cameras. Mi 11X has a 20 megapixel selfie camera as opposed to the 12 megapixel one on the iPhone 12. But honestly, I don't see the selfies on the Mi 11X being any more sharper or detailed than the ones from the iPhone 12. There is a difference in the way both of them capture colors and contrast, but not so much of a difference in details. I don't like that the iPhone makes the skin tones appear yellowish or pale in its selfies. It also captures much less contrast, making its selfies appear faded when compared side by side to the ones from the Mi 11X. Portrait selfies are definitely better from the iPhone 12, not only in terms of edge detection, but it also captures better dynamic range and details overall. Again, 
if Apple would do something about the yellowish tint in these selfies, that would be just great. Here's a video from the front facing camera of the Mi 11X and the iPhone 12. You can see how both these phones are handling the overall colors of the scene, exposure and stabilization when I'm walking around with it. You can also let me know in the comments which one of these two do you think is picking my voice better. So with that, we have seen over 165 image and video samples from both these phones combined. While the iPhone 12 is a clear winner in low light, during daytime, you won't find that big of a difference between the images from both of them. Now yes, the difference is there and the images from the iPhone 12 are definitely better, but I really don't think that they are two times as good. I feel if Xiaomi would have given us OIS on the main camera, the difference between these two would have been even less. If you are into macro photography, Mi 11X also has a dedicated lens for it, which the iPhone 12 doesn't. If you plan on getting the Mi 11X and are worried about its cameras, don't be. Although its megapixel count is not as high as some of the other phones, but the ISP on its Snapdragon 870 processor helps it deliver good images. These were my thoughts about the cameras on both these phones. But you guys saw the images too, so what do you guys think about them? Let me know in the comments. And if you guys want to purchase any of these phones, as always, I will really appreciate if you get them from the affiliate links in the description section. That is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I will catch you guys in the next video. Take care.